All right. So let's uh, uh, try to start uh, on time, not to uh, make uh, any so German identity of Karim with being late again. <laughs> so it's a, a pleasure to introduce uh, Richard Stanley, who is going to tell us a little bit about Karim and introduce him for his second lecture. Richard? Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry that uh, due to Zoom issues, I wasn't able to uh, introduce Karim uh, yesterday, but I'm happy to be able to do it today. Uh, he received his PhD in 2013 from the Free University of Berlin. And in 2015, he won the European Prize in Combinatorics. Uh, Karim is now uh, at the University of Copenhagen in the Einstein Institute of Mathematics at Hebrew University in Jerusalem. And I guess by now you know that he's made many uh, spectacular contributions to algebraic combinatorics, which he is enlightening us about. And uh, now he will continue with uh, part two of his talk on left chat theorems beyond Hodge structure. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Richard. Um, so um, yesterday I, I, I ended on the theorem, all right? And um, today I want to explain at least part of it. So I want to give you an intuition how the proof, actually the proofs of this theorem work, because by now there are, um, there are two proofs. Um, and then afterwards, I will I will generalize this a little. And I'm I'm kind of trying to give you a rough intuition of what is happening. Um, um, but um, I hope this this um, this uh, gives you some picture. I, 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 you can you can of course stop me at any time. So let me um, let me uh, recall the theorem. So we had this um, structure of sigma a simple show uh, a sphere a triangulated sphere. And really, I mean, this actually the theorem it works in an appropriate way, appropriate way on on essentially all manifolds that are closed and orientable. It actually works in a more general context of uh, simplicial cycles, but uh, it's it's a little more complicated to stay. So basically, there's a Gorenstein of the associated algebra, and that satisfies um, satisfies the the um, the uh, um, the left principle. So really, you kind of only need a fundamental class in, in the sense um, of dimension d of dimension d minus one. Okay, dimension d minus one. And then what we had right tomorrow, we had a um, k um, a field um, any infinite field and uh, infinite uh, field. And I should say, I mean, okay, so I, I really allow, I mean, maybe I should have said this before because I really allow this to, more, to be homology spheres, right? So, but let's not, let's not focus too much on, on this generality. So we, this can be homology field, uh, spheres of a K. And then what I was looking at is this ring um, A of sigma, right? And A of sigma, once again, um, this was, okay, so this depends, of course, on the field, but really also depends on this linear system of parameters theta, because we, what I did, I started from this unreduced um, phase ring, and then I modded out the idea generated by theta. And the, uh, the crucial thing is really theta is, is supremely important to, 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 this, uh, to this theorem. So, um, and... So what do I uh, what do I want here? So for um, for theta generic and L in the D one component of this ring, again a generic element. So this is somehow theta and L are generic in this product space. We have All right, so the hard left sheds. And this was that um, I have this isomorphism from degree i to degree d minus i 
So of course, some of the implicit assumption here is that i is less than d half. So I have to multiply this d minus two i, and this is an isomorphism. And then I have the whole Amman relations. Um, which states that um, um, this bilinear form Q I L is non degenerate. On all subspaces, um, generated by square free monomials, monomials or subcomplexes, subcomplexes, and I, I should go to the next page. Um, and then um, the final, the final statement. This was um, so called total. An isotopy. And this is, um, well, I mean, I have to, okay, so let me, there are two cases here um, for the case where characteristic equal to two, we have the full statements um, and uh, in characteristic not equal to two, we have some more, an almost total anisotropy. And I, I don't know whether I will go to this to this case because uh, it's a little um, trickier to state. And oh, sorry, there's just not enough. I mean, I want to give more intuition. I mean, do less and uh, do less and explain it better. That's that's usually what I try to do. And this is so. Let me just explain this case here. There are some other characteristic two case, and this is a um, for there exists a, a field extension. K tilde of K such that um, in a K tilde sigma theta tilde, so I have a more generic linear system of parameters that is defined over, over K tilde, um, such that, um, such that, uh, um, in, such that in Q, the, this bilinear form QIL never degenerates. Degenerates. And any subspace which is equivalent to say, saying that QIL um, U, U is not equal to zero for all uh, U and D I. Okay, these are the, the two states. And now, I basically want to convince you that uh, that that these statements that that these statements in some way are connected and try to give you the scheme of the proof of what is going on. Um, so, really, so that's 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 the key the the the, the key arguments here. That's now that uh, in some way we can they're connected and then there is some induction going on. So let me give you the intuition. So. What is what is clear is that I mean this that this total is anisotropy. That this is stronger than the whole Laman relations, right? Laman relations. Right. Um, and what is also easy to see is that um, that uh, that the whole Laman relations in a given dimension, uh, let me say this in dimension for, for spheres, for, for the case uh, for sigma of dimension t minus one. Um, and whole Laman relations, of course, they are strictly more general than the hard left sheds theorem um, for dimension d minus one for, 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 for sigma of dimension d minus one. Um, dimension d minus one. But no, so the point is really that there's something more. And what I'm claiming here is that essentially that whole Laman of dimension um, 
um, of, a, for, uh, of dimension uh, d minus two. So for spheres of dimension d minus two, it implies the hard left sheds in dimension d minus one. So this is what tomorrow I want to give you the intuition for this. Okay, of this what what is happening here. So that's kind of the, the cool thing. This is how the intuition will work. And then I will, of course, have to explain to you how hard left sheds implies all the mod relations. That's how to close this induction. So I, I mean, if I already gain the dimension here, then I only I don't have to gain in the other case, right? So I only have to prove that hard left sheds for a fixed dimension implies all the in the same dimension. And I have to argue for that. But I mean, uh, we will actually do, we will actually see that actually also in, in, in this implication, we can improve in dimension. So there is more. Actually, we can improve in both cases. That's kind of nice. So why is that? And the story, I mean, uh, when when I first came up with this, it's somehow I was having ice cream in a in a small in a in a very in a, okay. So I'm making some kind of advertisement, right? but it's a very good ice cream place in, in Jerusalem. When I came up with this with this direction, right? so somehow this lemma came to me. It's somehow when I have when I had some saffron ice cream, and it's very good. But somehow, the point is, it's actually it turned out that when I gave a talk about it at EHS sometime later, uh, Maxim raised his hand and told me, well, I mean, that's not new, that Kronecker knew this. Okay, Kronecker knew this. Uh, I still like to tell my story about the ice cream. So this is uh, the following lemma. So I want to, I want to, so what do I want to do? So let's, let me restrict to the simplest case. So um, let's say, let's, um, let's consider the case where, where D, um, is, is is equal to 2k. All right. So um, then um, then I'm, there's one isomorphism that is kind of uh, most the most interesting one. So I want to look at the isomorphism between the degree k minus 1 and degree k sigma. All right. And this is really just the single multiplication of L. Right, there's so there's no powers here. There's some just one linear map, and I want to construct this. And it turns out that if you know how to do this, and you know how to do everything. I mean, essentially, you have to say a little bit, but I mean that's that's the important case. So this is the important left sheds. The first one trivial or left sheds are some of them is important one. Some of them. So. I want to construct this. So the point is, so here's the problem, right? I, I don't know how to construct a map like that. How, how do I do that? So how, where would this, where would this exist? Um, so um, the trick is now, I don't take L. I mean, I, I don't, I, I cannot analyze L just to begin with as a generic element, but I might have maps that I understand. So in this case, Maps that I understand rather well are maps that come from the combinatorics. So multiplications with um, with 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 just variables, right? It's a small. Remember, small. It's actually um, so we started small with a of sigma. It's defined as a quotient of k of sigma, right? So this was and this was the polynomial ring modulo um, um, the, this this non-phase ideal. So for instance, if I multiply with a variable right, corresponding to some vertex here, right? So the multiplication with some vertex, I understand this very well, right? So I understand that the kernel, what the what the kernel will be. Everything, what will be in the kernel, well, um, um, a monomial will be in the kernel if and only if the product um, here does not uh, form a face in the simplicial complex, right? So the multiplication with xv has kernel, Um, given by monomials supported in um, in sigma, such that um, the union, the support of this monomial, so support of x alpha, um, is not supported. Right? So it's a very combinatorial description. I I, I can describe the kernel rather well, so it's not supported in um, uh, in, in in sigma. And the image also, the image is also very easily described. So the image 
Um, I can also de describe so the image of this multiplication. Image, well, I mean, it must be a monomial that involves XV. So it must be in the neighborhood of XV. That's it. So it must be, the, it's a collection of those monomials that uh, contain XV. So it's just really just the, 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 all, the, all, the, all the simplices that contain XV. That's it. But the image is equally described, right? Equally described. So I, I have these maps that I um, that I understand well, and if I'm lucky, the kernel is empty and the image is empty. Then I'm done. And there are indeed cases where this is the case. I mean, in general, this will be not. This will be not. Uh, it will not be the case that the kernel is empty. Uh, the kernel is zero, and the image is everything. Um, but uh, at least we control it. So now the no, what. Now what we what we do is we start naively. We start with somehow to get to to get a generic L. We start with X V. Right? And then then we take another vertex. Take another take another vertex. Another vertex, and maybe I should uh, index this some more in the v1, the vertex v2, and then we look at what I what I write x v1 plus x v2, and here there's a uh, this plus in quotation marks means generic linear combination. Okay, so I I don't write coefficients because you are supposed to choose them generic. Okay, what do you hope? You hope that the kernel of this map is as small as possible, All right? Hope kernel is smaller than individual kernels. Right, in the optimal case, right, I, what, how, how small can you hope the kernel to be? Um, well, the kernel of, can be, I mean, the kernel, of the li generic linear combination of these two maps, and I, um, I mean, I, I, I see this map. I, I did see this element. The maps are the multiplication with these elements, right? So, x v two. This, um, well, I mean, so the optimal case is that the kernel would be the intersection of the individual kernels, right? I mean, I cannot hope for smaller. Exit, All right? That's it. Uh, yeah, that's my the highest hope I can have. And here now, finally, I, I go to this lemma of Kronik. And it's a very simple so lemma Kronik. So um, you have A and B linear maps. of vector spaces um, x to y over k infinite. Right? Then, OK, so conclusion that I want is that the kernel of A plus B is um, is equal to the kernel of intersections. Okay, and what is a what is a, a sufficient condition for this? Well, this is the following. So I take the kernel of A, I map it under B, and I um, intersect it with the image of A, and this is supposed to be zero. Okay, that's it. If this is true, this is true. Right? Simple. Um, there's also a kind of dual criterion, right? So, what's, what, what's the best hope for the image? Let me just say the image of A plus B. Um, this, I mean, the optimal case would be that this is the span of the images of A and the images of B. 
And I mean, it's always no. I, I will leave this as as now as an exercise for you. What the what the criterion is here? It's a, there's a way to do it, but it's kind of uh, it's always good to remember dualities. It's not important for us. So now, what's the idea? All right, take vertex. So idea. All right. So start with start with. V1, right? Um, right, so that's our first map, x v1. And then what we do is we um, we look at the general combination with x v2. Right. That's the, our next map. All right. And then if, if this kernel, if the intersection of these kernels is still non-trivial, all right, then we take another vertex, x v3. Okay. So I call this the transversal prime property. So specifically, um, transversal prime property means that um, if I have a subset W of the vertices of sigma, the generic linear combination of these vertices um, W in big W, um, XW, has a kernel, which is um, um, the intersection of these, right? So W and W, um, XW. And again, it's always about the map inducement in multiplications, right? So that's, ah, sorry. Right, that's that's optimal and that's that's what I want to prove. And the proof, I mean, the idea is well, we want to prove this by induction, right? So now we have proven this, uh, say for for sets of size one or sets of size two, and then we want to go to sets of size three, and so on and so forth. Notice that some of Poincaré duality implies um, Poincaré duality implies immediately that um, uh, that if I prove this transversal prime property, then I actually constructed the middle isomorphism because what you can show is that the intersection of all the vertices over all the vertices of sigma, these kernels, that this is zero. So Poincaré duality implies that this year, that this is zero. So if I if I if I prove the transversal prime property, I prove my isomorphism. Now, okay, so fine, good. I mean, how does it come in? How does this Paul Laman relations come in? Right. I, I told you now a recipe how to construct an isomorphism, how to construct the left side isomorphism. How does Paul Laman come in? And let me give you the intuition. So let's let's do this somehow. Let's let's. Assume um, for some reason Lutnir has maybe given has proven that for some index at W, I have the transversal prime property. So for um, W satisfies, um, let me just uh, give it a little star, star. Right, I, I'm not I'm not satisfied with W, so I have another vertex x n, right, a new vertex. So then I want to um, I want to take the generic combination xn with this uh, with this uh, element that uh, that Gutner already constructed. So x uh, w n w. All right. So, right. And I want to understand this. So xn will now be my b in this lemma of Kronecker, right? And um, the the method is already constructed. This will be my a. Okay. So Okay, so let, let's look at this criterion. So what do I need to, to, to extend this, uh, the transversal prime property, this property star to the union of W, right? Big W and N. What I need to look at, I look at, I need to look at this here, right? I need to look at uh, this, this, uh, this condition. So what does it say? Well, it says that, okay, again, I forget the multiplication sign. So Xn times, the kernel of this generic combination of the whole index set um, intersected with the image of um, of this of of this image of of this generic combination. 
that this is zero. All right? Simple enough. Um, all right. So what next? So now observe, observe something. We are, we are not doing this in a vacuum. We are actually doing this in, in a Poincaré duality algebra. And somehow in, um, in this uh, Poincaré duality algebra of A sigma, in A sigma, um, kernel of this map, right, or of any map, and image of this map, they are orthogonal or complements, right? They are on the orthogonal complements under the Poincaré parity. Orthogonal under Poincaré parity. Right. So now, but I'm not, I'm not I, I mean, I'm really, if you think about it, I'm in the smaller space because if I want to check that these two, that the intersection of these two is empty, oh, uh, sorry, not empty, that the, actually the intersection is trivial, it is zero, is the, what I really only have to do is I have to look at, I mean, if there's intersection happening, then I only have to look at the, inter, the ideal of Xn, all right? So I have to only look at, I mean, restrict to the ideal of Xn. So now there's something, so there's, uh, I mean, you're looking at all the faces um, containing, right? Well, the, the ideal of Xn, right? So it consists, consists of all the faces that contain um, um, this vertex n. If you think about it, it's again a sphere. Right, the collection of all the the face poset of all these simplices that contain X, and it's again a sphere. It's also called the link. Um, and I have then this is a case. Okay, so I have the the link of this vertex n and sigma. All right, isomorphic. This is isomorphic to this. And now I have okay. So now I have this this kernel of sigma in a, a, a link of sigma. And I have the image of sigma that I can restrict by intersection to this, um, this to this ring. So, so uh, this is a link sigma in a. Okay. And it turns out, so now they are, uh, these are again, these are in the same space again. And they are, again, somehow it's not hard to see that they are still orthogonal complements. And uh, the Poincaré pairing in this smaller ring, right? In, under Poincaré pairing. Notice that somehow, if sigma was of dimension d minus two, d minus one, then this link of sigma is of dimension d minus two. Right? So they are orthogonal complements. So now, again, we do basic linear algebra. So when do, okay, so when do orthogonal complements restrict, um, intersect trivially? All right. Um, all right, so I have a pairing, right? So I have some bi bilinear form, and I want to say, so I have these two spaces, they, they, they stand orthogonal on each other, right? I mean, and not the standard scalar product. And I want to ask, well, why, why would they, when are they, um, um, when, why do, when do they only intersect in zero? I mean, and the answer is, if you think about it, right? And this is the case, uh, if and only if the pairing, the bilinear pairing, Restricted to one factor, right? So either the kernel or the image, or right? Or either the first step, it doesn't matter which one you take. Um, is not uh, is is perfect, right? Notice that tomorrow. I mean, if it's if it's 
if it if the pairing is non-degenerate on, on on your primary space, then it will be non-degenerate on on your on the orthogonal complement. That's the if and only if condition. It's perfect. Right, but that's exactly so. Now we are in the situation, right? So exactly we're in exactly in the situation where um, we had we have this global bilinear pairing, and we want to say that the restriction to some subspace is perfect. That's 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 exactly what we wanted to start with, right? So we wanted to say that. Bilinear pairings, uh, some of those are Hodge-Hillman relations. This is related to bilinear pairings restricted uh, to subspaces being trivial. Uh, sorry, Hall-Hamann relations. Right? These are exactly the bilinear pairings restricted to um, um, subspaces being trivial. Right? So that's it. So this gives you the intuition. I mean, the, I have to. I mean, uh, I would have to argue a little more now because I actually argued that you know, we are talking about square monomial ideals and there are some technicalities here, but. This is exactly, this is almost exactly Hamalaman. Almost. So that, I mean, I wanted to give you an intuition and not to go to the technical, but this, so that, that is it for now. Um, almost Hamalaman. So that's, that's, that's this one direction. Um, now, um, now what, uh, what I owe you is to, to explain how to go from, how, how hard left shift actually implies Hamalaman. And I uh, will try to convince you with a special case. Uh, actually, maybe maybe the best case to, 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 to look at this, maybe the best idea to look at this, is to look at the case when it fails. And it turns out that it fails rather often, these whole Laman relations. I mean, generically, it doesn't fail. But I mean, even for very nice varieties that somehow uh, everyone loves and likes and learns in like some first, the first hours of your toric geometry course, it fails. So here's a variety that is, that is nice. So consider, so intuition for Hollerman. For Hollerman. Um, okay, so let me give a nice variety. So let me look at P1. Cross P1. Right? So you might know this as really just, I mean, if you, if you think combinatorially, then this is really just the variety that you get by um, really, I mean, the multiplication of two lines. So what, what, what do you will get? I mean, it's really just a variety over the cube or the cross polytor, right? So the fan, the associated fan, associated fan. is just this one, right? It's a fan in R2, and you have these four regions, right? It's, it's a very nice fan. You cannot, I mean, there's almost no nicer fan. I mean, I, if, you, if you really want to do practical computations, it's even easier than the simplex because it's so nice and symmetric. I mean, these are really just the coordinates, of this, right? So this is sigma. So it's a right amount. Oh, the, the, the sphere is one-dimensional, right? Well, this is d minus one is equal to one dimension, right? So the associated sphere is really just, okay, so let me make the drawing again. Um, just this, um, well, it's supposed to be a regular square, but I mean, it doesn't really matter, so. Yeah, so you know that it's supposed to be regular, so it's, uh, it's supposed to be symmetric. All right, so, and I claim that this does not satisfy Holomar. Does not satisfy Holomar. And why? I mean, I basically, okay, so this is um, t is equal to 2, right? t is equal to 2, t minus 1 was equal to 1. So I claim that uh, there is an element um, that there is a, a square free monomial ideal, um, A1. Oh, it's well. I in A1 of sigma square free monomial. Monomial. Um, such that, um, well, the, 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 the Q, I, L, Restricted to I is degenerate. 
And it's really simple. So what I take is just the idea generated by one of these rays, so Xn. If you want to think of it as a as generated by a subcomplex, then you can take this this lower hemisphere and call it delta and look at somehow i is then just generated as the kernel mm, of a sigma to a delta. All right. And okay, so that that's it. I I, I claim that uh, somehow this that this is degenerate, and since this is really just I mean it's generated by a single element. What I'm cl really claiming is that x n square is equal to zero. All right. Um, and normally this is somehow I mean if I gave this lecture in person, then this is kind of the the, the moment where I would stop and uh, see. Um, and I ask the audience whether someone sees it, but I mean, now only Richard has his camera on. I can ask Richard if he sees why this xn squared is equal to zero. Do you? Uh, you have to switch on the mic. Uh, you, you go ahead. Hmm. Do you see it, right? Or should I, should I just go you on? Yeah, you, you should yeah, explain. yeah. So um, there are um, right. So uh, there are two ways of thinking about this thing. One was by the by this uh, quotient of of a polynomial ring, and the other way was to think of this as as a covariance polynomial functions, right? And the point was that what, what I kill in this covariance polynomial functions are the, the say, ideal generated by global linear function. So let's look at this function xn. So this is linear here, right? It's linear on this ray. And so it's non-zero non -zero here, right? And it is zero on, on, on this domain, right? On, on, the, on this lower hemisphere, it is zero, right? So it's kind of, if you think about it, it's, it's one linear function in this upper hemisphere or it, in this upper half plane. And it's another linear function, namely the zero function in the lower half plane, right? That's Xn as Conway's linear function. So if I now take Xn times Xn, right? Then I can, this is the same as the Xn times um, the linear function in the upper hemisphere, linear function um, extended, um, sorry, linear function in upper half plane extended to the external plane, extended to plane, to the plane. All right, so I have, the, I have a linear function here in this upper half plane and I just extend it. All right, so now xn times xn, let's see. So in the upper half plane, it's xn times xn because, um, because I mean, uh, it's just the, the same linear function. I just extended, I mean, the, the only way, the only reason I, the only region I, I changed this xn by, by, by making it unzero was in the lower half plane. And in the lower half plane, it's zero anyway because xn is zero in the lower half plane. All right, so, Xn is zero, so lower half plane is zero anyway. The upper half plane, it's just Xn squared. So this is, I mean, so this means that it's Xn times Xn is actually Xn times a linear function, times a global linear function. But the global linear functions I kill. So I, I, that's it. I, I have the global linear functions, I kill, I kill them. And that's, that's it. Um, if you want to do the, the um, I mean, if you don't like this this way of of, of writing it, so let let, let me just uh, so let me just give names. So x n, um, x s, right? So and then I have x east and oh sorry, x west and x east. So it's a political distinction, but fine. Um, and really, somehow what I have is right my the polynomial ring here that I have is x north, x west, and so on. And then I mod out um, the, uh, the the monomials x n x s um, x uh, x x east x west 
right? So they have trouble talking to each other. And then we, what we also mod, mod out is um, the, okay, so now what are the linear forms that I mod out? Well, the linear forms are x, um, x north minus x south and x east minus um, x west. All right, so that, that, that's a sigma in this case, and you can just uh, verify for yourself. It's an easy calculation that x n squared is in this ring is zero. Okay. All right. So it fails. So why? Okay. So it fails, but why doesn't this contradict, contradict the theorem? Well, all right. So I, I the way I constructed it is okay. So I, I started with k of k of sigma. All right, which was. Uh, which was this k of x modulo um, x n right non faces x n x s um, and then I have x east x west, All right? But then I took out somehow to reach a. I, I took this k of sigma and I took out a very special linear system of parameters. But I could have taken any other generic. I, I could have taken a better one, and I claim that for a generic one it will work. So a of sigma is this, but but we need but we need theta generic. Okay. Um, so now, okay. So why is why does this? Uh, um, so so if I take this generic, the fan will look somewhat like this. So it's more not instead of having. The product of two lines it will look like something like uh, um, non-straight lines, and I claim that this is enough. In fact, in this case, it's exactly enough that some of these that these two that these opposing opposing lines are not uh, or opposing rays are not collinear. This is exactly the criterion for for this one-dimensional case, and I claim that then the whole amount of relations are true. So let me I mean try to to convince you why this is uh, the case. All right, so um, let let and. So let me give you an intuition in a special case that immediately reduces uh, in some way to the left shed zero. So let, let's look at this following case. So we have sigma, a sphere of dimension 2k minus 1. All right? And I want to just look at the middle Poincare pairing. So d, all right? So it's, this, is small. this is equal to d minus 1. So I want to look at this pairing of ak of sigma with itself, right? So this is the Hodgema pairing in the middle, a k of sigma with a k of sigma. And I want to say that on non, uh, on square free monomial ideals, this is non-trivial. There should be some reason for this. So where does this come from? So um, let me just look at one case of, of, of a very special case. So this is it, the case where um, the ideal is given as the kernel of A of sigma to a subcomplex delta, where delta is a disk of dimension d minus one. All right, then um, I um, is also, um, you can also think of it as um, as a sigma delta, so this is kind of this uh, relative standard the relative phase ring, which is the ideal in a sigma generated by the phases of sigma not in delta, right, or equivalently somehow in the interior in the interior of the complement of delta in sigma. So I will write this as delta bar, right? So this is a, you have a disk in a sphere, and so the complement will be again a disk, okay? I'm logic. Um, all right. And I want to look at this case, right? So this is delta bar, which is sigma without delta, okay? Um, so, okay, so now this is the ideal. So, um, now you can ask the question, when is um, the Poincaré pairing, when is AK 
of sigma delta. And another way of writing it would be A delta bar boundary delta bar. It's just, I mean, the commutative algebra version of excision. Um, Non-degenerate, right? Now, times AK um, delta bar boundary delta bar. Non-degenerate to the to, to K right, or, or AD. Um, Non-degenerate. All right, so think a little bit about it. If I, I want to say that the pairing restricted to an ideal is non-trivial, so uh, the other, the other, another way of saying is is that if I if I take this ideal and I map, I, I look at the induced map to um, the quotient of a of sigma by the annihilator of this ideal, then this must be injective. All right, so equivalently, um, the map from I to a of sigma model the annihilator of I under the Poincaré pairing is non-trivial. Uh, sorry, not, not, not trivial, it's injected. injected. Right, it's uh, just, I mean, just getting used to dualities a bit actually. All right, so I have this map. So now let me, let me actually compute this in this case. So what is A sigma in this case? All right, what is, what is, what is, what is what is no? What is not not what is AC? What is what is what is this object here in this case? Well, it turns out that it's not hard to show that this uh, that this uh, um, for our case is actually just a very familiar object. It's just a delta bar, all right? In our case. So really, what you want to do is so you you have this. A delta bar, boundary delta bar, and you map it to A delta bar. Right? That's 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 the whole the whole shebang. There's nothing. Uh, that, that's that's what I want to understand. I want, why want, why 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 should this be an injection? I mean, it, it, this is kind of a mysterious map, and I, you know, I haven't really found uh, um, anyone that's now uh, or any place that this was considered before. It's kind of it's kind of strange. So there are some there are some interesting inequalities. Uh, there are some cases where uh, um, actually Richard showed somehow that the um, that the, somehow the H vector on of a disk is 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 monotone, provided that uh, you have that the boundary of this disk has some Lipschitz property. And so this is somehow the, the the whole inspiration for the, for looking at this map. But I mean that's kind of I mean it was very hidden also in there. So it's, you know, it, I, I haven't found any anyone really look at this map um, in, in detail. So and now we want to understand this in degree K. So why would this be interesting? So how do I analyze this? So let's, I mean, if I, if, if I don't understand the map in, 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 in general, so let, let me maybe make a look at a simpler case. So let me look at this before the attenuation reduction. All right, so I have, before the Adenian reduction, I have the map K delta to um, K delta bar. All right, and now, okay, so, okay, so now actually it's easy to figure out what, what is, what is uh, the missing piece in this uh, exact sequence. All right, so it, it's just the boundary of delta bar. All right. It's really just those faces I don't catch in this in this interior, right? So these are the faces in the interior. These are all the faces. So what I miss are the faces in the boundary. That's it. Okay, so now I do it at tiny reduction. Um, so I have my linear system of parameters theta. And so now theta, I will write as theta one to theta d. So let me let me just shorten it a little. Let me call theta tilde, this is theta one to theta d minus one. All right. Mm. So okay. So I take out. Let me take out this 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 linear system first. So what happens here? So this here is a sphere, right? It's a boundary of a disk. It will be a sphere. This is a disk, and this is a, well, it's a relative disk. These are all called Macaulay objects. Actually, it's enough that it's, I mean, first of them is called Macaulay. The other ones I don't really care. So it turns out that modding out. Um, 
the regular system, right, out of the small a linear system out of Colin Macaulay um, object or Colin Macaulay things. Um, well, this goes well until I hit the cold dimension. So now let's look at the cold dimension. The cold dimension here, cold dimension d, d, and d minus one. So as long as I um, take out only theta tilde, this sequence will stay exact. All right. So I could look at, um, so just a basic commutative algebra tells me that k delta bar, boundary delta bar, actually, let me, let me save a little time and space because I use a lot of time and space. Um, is that um, this model of theta tilde, theta tilde, theta tilde, that's right. And all this, it's the ideal. That this here, um, that this is indeed uh, uh, an exact sequence. All right, so now, for now I'm an exact functor. So now the last, okay, so now I, I want to look at theta d here. All right, I, 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 I didn't mod out by all the linear system parameters. I'm really, I mean, I want, I'm interested in the quotient by theta, not by theta tilde. So I have to mod out this, one additional linear form. And now it becomes crucial that, okay, so the problem is that this here is now, this is more than the, the this is now of cool dimension zero here, right? So this is, this is a finite dimensional vector space. So it's not so, I mean, I cannot use just classical commutative algebra to take out theta d. But I notice that I, I mean, I, I so now sometimes at least in the lower half, um, this will be injected. Right, at least somehow to, to up to up to the half dimension this will be injected. For instance, exactly if I have the left isomorphism. So if left is true, if specifically theta d is left shed on on um, k hundred. Tilde. Well, model of theta tilde. Um, then the sequence remains exact up to degree k, which is exactly what I wanted. But if it, it remains exact, then exactly I have this injection here after I mod out this additional linear form. Okay, so that's it. So left sheds on this co-dimension one submanifold implies the bias pairing property. And that's where it comes from. So this is all good and nice. And it turns out to know, in this way, you can actually build up a story and a proof inductively. Um, and this was uh, some of the first proof of, of, of how Amman and how left sheds. And then uh, these two Greek guys came around and they basically experimented with Macaulay and they found a formula that, that kind of fell out of thin air. We're still, try still trying to understand it, where it comes from uh, and what kind of, what kind of the, the, the surrounding, what the, what the nature of this formula is in an algebraic geometric way. We have no clue really. Uh, we can generalize it to a, to a few more general situations, but somehow we, this, it turns out that this, this this kind of complicated tandem of proving bias pairing, then left sheds, right? So prove it, not proving Holoman, then left sheds, and then from left sheds Holoman. You don't need to do all, all this. It's actually, it's actually much simpler. So basically, what they said is, um, let's look at let us look at um, a of sigma, right? And this is K of sigma modal or theta, and the coefficients of sigma, sorry, coefficients of, of the theta are independent variables. So really, they don't look at K, all right? They, they look at K, but then I look at the, 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 the field of rational functions 
of these coefficients of theta. So if, as my theta is a matrix, right? I think of this as, my, as some linear forms, but I, mean, I can just think of this as a matrix of coefficients, and each of them is a new um, algebraically independent variable. Transcendental variable, and I look at the um, at this at this at this larger field. It's much larger field, k tilde, like this. And then basically, they they define it now. They it turns out that you can define a, a, a differentiation, a, a, a differential operator, right? So a differential operator delta sigma, where sigma is a phase in. Um, is a face in 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 um, in big sigma, little, big, little sigma is a big face in big sigma, and um, you can look at the the the, the Hodge-Riemann bilinear pairing. So you can look at um, this Q. Um, so let me let me look at the case where again k so two k is equal to d. So look at this uh, pairing in the middle. So look at k. Um, um, and then, okay, so notice that in the middle, Q, K does not depend on L because there's no left sheds, right? So it's just a middle pairing, the element paired with itself because I don't have to pay anything to get to the fundamental class. So I, I, I kind of can delete this of, of an element U paired with itself, right? So this is a differential operator um, depending on sigma applied to um, this, this pairing with the pair with itself. And what does it differentiate after? Well, it differentiate what I vary here is theta, right? Thetas are, the thetas are independent random, not random variables, uh, independent variables, and I change them. I kind of think of this as a, somehow as a linear system of parameters in motion. And I differentiate, I kind of observe the change in this Hodgeriemann by linear form as I change it. And it turns out that you can actually measure this and at least in characteristic two. So, in characteristic two, um, this is equal to Q um, X sigma U squared. Okay. So now, okay, so the, that's, that's all nice and good, but it turns out that um, there's always, there's always, the, the, there exists a sigma such that the left side is not equal to zero, right? This is just Poincare duality, if you think about it. And then the, sorry, the right side, so the right side. In particular, the left side is not equal to zero, and you're done. That's it, it's a kind of, it falls out of thin air. Uh, problem is that somehow this, in Curtis, it only works in characteristic two. So there is somehow, in, in characteristic not equal to two, there is a kind of an error term. Um, characteristic not equal to two. Um, there's an error term, and you can, I mean, so then you have to, I mean, you have to control this error term, and somehow you, for now, we don't know how to prove this total anisotropy in general for, um, for, for characteristic not equal to two. And that's it. So, I mean, it falls out of thin air, but somehow, okay, so by now, um, the cool thing is that somehow, um, we know of more general cases where this total anisotropy holds than just spheres. Um, problem is I don't really, I mean, I, I have like minus minutes uh, for, for, to define this. So basically, so let me say, so we, we have this um, um, extension extended to, um, to um, so-called so simplicial cycles. And this is a, a published paper with uh, uh, Papadakis and Petrotu. And, uh, and then uh, recently, um, there, are, there are two separate works where we look at um, separate sheaves, basically. So we look at sheaves of a, uh, of a more general kind that are not just uh, the standard or the face ring sheaves, right? the standard researching of a, of a process, so sheaves of a process. Um, uh, sorry, there's, um, she's a proposal. So let me not, um, let me not, uh, go into too much detail, but the point here is that tomorrow, um, to define them, but I mean, one of the, the um, 
Okay, let, me, let me say that this is uh, there's two different teams of Papadakis, Petrotu, and my uh, and the student of my Jonas Steinmeier. Um, um, and one of the conclusions is that we can prove that um, the H star polynomial of uh, okay, so uh, Gorenstein. IDP polytope. So, for instance, reflexive polytope, right? So, more reflexive polytope is maybe something that you might know more than colleague Wallenstein, is unimodal. Um, I mean, the, there is a conjecture that you know, the reflexive is actually not needed, but um, that I don't, actually, I honestly, I don't believe. So, let me, let me, let me not, uh, not even state that conjecture because why would I? That conjecture that I don't believe in. Um, and that's it. Uh, so we're still kind of trying to understand what is happening here, but um, um, really, you know, what we're most interested in is kind of where this differentiation formula comes from. Because uh, for now, it just comes out of the Macaulay experiments. All right. Um, thank you. Um, I think that's where I should stop because I'm out of time. Um, thanks. All right, let's thank uh, Karim. Any questions? What is an IDP polytope? Ah, the cone of uh, the cone of the polytope has the, the integer decomposition polytope, uh, the property. That it's, I mean, take the cone over the, the polytope, right? So embed it at height one. Um, um, then um, the lattice points inside this, this cone are generated at height one. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, I think there is a result by this is basically saying that the algebra is generated in D one. That this more this semi group algebra is generated in D one. That's that's the point. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Other questions. Well, if not, thank you uh, again for, you. for having thank me. And thank you for the nice uh, lectures. So yeah. next time we hope to see you in Sofia. <laughs> and so we will proceed our series uh, uh, next week with a, a series of lectures by uh, Dennis Gaitsguri uh, okay. on November 8th and November 10th. More information uh, you can find on the uh, IMSA website. And of course, you can find there the... Um, recorded talks by uh, Karim. Several people already asked me about this. Once again, you can find this in one or two days on the website of IMSA and uh, of uh, ICMS. Thanks a lot again. Thanks, Richard, for introducing me. Thank you. Thank you. Right. My pleasure. Mm -hmm.